Lucifer, often synonymous with the devil or Satan in popular culture, carries a narrative laden with intrigue, rebellion, and spiritual warfare. This figure, weaving through religious texts, literature, and art, encapsulates the quintessential struggle between light and dark. Delving into the multifaceted nature of Lucifer's character, this essay traverses his origins, fall, representations, and the broader cosmos of angels and demons. Lucifer's Origin in Religious Texts Lucifer, a name that has echoed through millennia, carries with it an aura of mystery, beauty, and sometimes malevolence. To understand the origins of this enigmatic figure, one must first turn to the religious texts where his story began. In Christian theology, the most cited reference to Lucifer comes from the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, Isaiah 14, 12. 15 speaks of a morning star or son of the dawn who fell from heaven due to his pride. The Latin Vulgate translation of the Hebrew Bible uses the term Lucifer to describe this morning star, a term which means light bringer or light bearer. Over time, this passage combined with others came to be associated with the story of a rebellious angel cast out of heaven. However, it's worth noting that in its original context, the Isaiah passage was likely addressing a Babylonian king and his prideful aspirations, not an angelic being. In the New Testament, there are no direct mentions of Lucifer. However, some Christian interpretations have linked passages referencing Satan or the devil with the figure of Lucifer, creating a narrative of the fallen angel. One such reference is Revelation 12, 7, 9, which describes a war in heaven wherein Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, identified as the devil or Satan, who was thrown down to earth. Although not named as Lucifer, this narrative has been intertwined with the fallen angel story and later Christian thought. Interestingly, the concept of a rebellious heavenly being is not exclusive to Christian texts. In Islamic tradition, Iblis is a jinn, who refused God's command to bow to Adam, leading to his fall from grace. While Iblis shares some parallels with the Christian understanding of Satan or Lucifer, there are significant differences. Jinn, unlike angels in Islamic theology, possess free will, and Iblis's act was a result of his choice. Outside of these two major religions, there are other ancient texts and traditions that hint at beings resembling Lucifer. Some scholars point to Canaanite myths of the god Atar, who tried and failed to occupy the throne of Baal, or the Greek myth of Phaeton, who nearly destroyed the earth when trying to drive the chariot of the sun as potential precursors to the Lucifer story. The historical conflation of Lucifer with Satan is largely attributed to early Christian writers and theologians. The writings of early church fathers, combined with the interpretative traditions of the Middle Ages, solidified this fusion. One cannot discuss this without mentioning Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy, especially the Inferno section, where Satan, not explicitly named Lucifer, is depicted as a treacherous beast trapped in ice in the lowest circle of hell. Similarly, John Milton's Paradise Lost paints a vivid picture of Lucifer as the rebellious archangel who becomes Satan, the adversary of mankind. These literary works, while not religious texts, have immensely influenced the cultural and, to some extent, theological understanding of Lucifer. Additionally, in some Christian traditions, particularly the Eastern Orthodox Church, the differentiation between Satan and Lucifer is more pronounced, and they are not always viewed as the same entity. Furthermore, in the modern era, many theologians and scholars emphasize that the name Lucifer in the Isaiah passage shouldn't be directly equated with Satan, pointing back to its original context related to a human king. The Epic Fall from Grace Lucifer's fall from grace is one of the most dramatic and enduring tales in religious and cultural history. An angel of unparalleled beauty and wisdom his descent into rebellion and eventual banishment from heaven serves as a profound allegory for the consequences of pride and ambition. Traditionally, Lucifer is described as a cherished archangel, created to be a beacon of light and perfection among all of God's creations. Within the celestial hierarchy, he held a prominent position, perhaps only second to God himself. It's said that he was adorned with every precious gem and was blessed with immense wisdom. 
This grandeur, however, became the very seed of his downfall. As the tale goes, Lucifer's heart began to harbor pride. He looked upon his own splendor, brilliance, and power, and it filled him with a desire for more. This desire manifested as an ambition not just to be like God, but to ascend to his throne and become a God himself. He is often quoted as declaring, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. This proclamation captures the essence of his rebellion, an audacious challenge to the very order of the cosmos. However, Lucifer's ambition was not a solitary endeavor. He managed to rally a portion of the angelic host to his cause, sparking dissent in the heavenly realm. This insurrection culminated in a great celestial war. Archangel Michael, the chief warrior of heaven, led God's loyal angels against Lucifer and his rebellious cohorts. This war was not merely a clash of might, but a fundamental battle between obedience and rebellion, humility and pride. The outcome of this cosmic conflict was inevitable. Lucifer and his followers were no match for the combined power of God and his faithful angels. Defeated, they were expelled from heaven, cast out and condemned. The imagery of this expulsion is both tragic and dramatic. A once radiant being, now plummeting from the heavens like a falling star, stripped of his former glory and doomed to exist in eternal separation from his creator. In Christianity, this fallen state transformed Lucifer into Satan, the adversary of both God and humanity. His new domain became the underworld, where he reigns with other fallen angels, now referred to as demons. From this realm, Satan and his minions wage a continuous battle against humanity, seeking to lead souls away from God. This narrative of the fall from grace, while rooted in religious texts, resonates deeply with human experience. It touches upon themes of pride, ambition, betrayal, and redemption. It's a reminder of the dangers of unchecked ego and the profound consequences of turning away from one's true purpose and calling. In the Christian narrative, Lucifer's fall is juxtaposed with the story of redemption through Jesus Christ. While Lucifer sought to ascend to God's throne through pride and rebellion, Jesus, God incarnate, humbled himself, taking on human form and suffering death on the cross to redeem humanity. This contrast amplifies the lessons of the Luciferian fall. That true exaltation comes not from self-aggrandizement, but from humility, service, and obedience. Outside Christianity, variations of the fallen angel theme appear. In Islam, as mentioned earlier, the figure of Iblis stands as a parallel, refusing to bow to Adam and subsequently being expelled from the heavenly realm. Allah says that we said to the angels, bow down to Adam. All bow down, illa Iblis, except Iblis. His fall is also attributed to pride, albeit manifested differently. Before that, Allah questions Iblis, what is it that is stopping you from prostrating to this that I have created? Do you know what he says? He says, I am much better than him. You made him from dust and you made me from fire. The enduring nature of this story, with its rich symbolism and moral lessons, ensures its continued influence across cultures and eras. Artists, writers, and thinkers have often drawn from this epic tale, interpreting and reimagining it to reflect on the human condition, the nature of evil, and the potential for redemption. Lucifer versus Satan, distinguishing identities. The names Lucifer and Satan have become almost interchangeable in popular discourse, especially in Western cultures. However, upon closer examination of religious texts and historical interpretations, it becomes evident that these two figures, while often conflated, have distinct origins, attributes, and evolutions in their respective narratives. The name Lucifer has its roots in Latin, meaning light-bringer or light-bearer. As previously mentioned, its most notable biblical appearance is in the book of Isaiah. The reference, addressing a fallen morning star or son of the dawn, was a poetic critique of a Babylonian king's arrogance, rather than a commentary on a celestial being. Over time, through translations like the Latin Vulgate and the subsequent interpretations by Christian theologians, this morning star began to be associated with a rebellious angel cast from heaven, thus giving birth to the figure of Lucifer as the fallen angel. 
Satan, on the other hand, has a more consistent presence throughout religious texts. The term Satan originates from a Hebrew word that means adversary or accuser. In the Old Testament, especially in the book of Job, Satan appears as a sort of celestial prosecutor, challenging humans, faith, and loyalty to God. He doesn't yet possess the fully demonic attributes that will be ascribed to him later. Over time, and especially in the New Testament, Satan's identity solidifies as the archenemy of God and humanity. In books like Revelation, he is depicted as a dragon, waging war against the forces of good and seeking to lead humanity astray. The conflation of Lucifer with Satan began in earnest during the early centuries of Christianity. Early Christian theologians and writers, attempting to understand the nature of evil in the world, found in the Isaiah passage a compelling narrative of pride and fall. They merged this with the more established figure of Satan, the adversary. This fusion created a powerful narrative of a single arch enemy of God, who, due to his pride, was cast out of heaven and now sought to undermine God's creation. The synthesis of these two figures was further solidified through influential literary works. Dante's Inferno and Milton's Paradise Lost were instrumental in shaping the modern understanding of Satan and Lucifer. Milton, in particular, painted a rich and complex portrait of Lucifer as the fallen angel who, out of pride and a desire for independence, rebels against God and becomes Satan, the ruler of hell. However, not all Christian traditions accept this conflation. Eastern Orthodox Christianity, for instance, tends to keep a more distinct separation between the devil and Lucifer. Moreover, as modern biblical scholarship has advanced, many theologians and historians emphasize that the traditional interpretation conflating Lucifer with Satan might be based more on historical circumstance and less on textual evidence. Another dimension to this discussion is the cultural and symbolic significance of these figures. Lucifer, as the light bringer, is sometimes viewed in a more positive or neutral light, symbolizing enlightenment and knowledge. This is evident in some interpretations of the Prometheus myth and in certain strands of Gnostic thought. Satan, in contrast, has more uniformly negative connotations, representing temptation, evil, and chaos. Outside of Christianity, the distinction becomes even more pronounced. In Islam, while there's a clear concept of the devil, shaitan, and his rebellion against God, there's no figure that directly corresponds to the Christian concept of Lucifer as the beautiful, fallen angel. The story of Iblis refusing to bow to Adam shares thematic elements with the Lucifer narrative, but exists in a distinct theological framework. Early Cultural Interpretations of Lucifer The figure of Lucifer has not only been pivotal within religious contexts, but has also permeated wider cultural imaginations, particularly in the ancient and medieval world. The transformation of Lucifer from a biblical reference to a complex character with varied meanings and attributes can be traced through the tapestry of early literature, art, and folklore. In the Greco-Roman world, where myths and legends were abundant, many found parallels between Lucifer and their pantheon of gods and heroes. One of the most frequently drawn comparisons was between Lucifer and Prometheus. Prometheus, who defied the gods to bring fire, a symbol of knowledge to humanity, could be seen as a light bringer, much like Lucifer. His act of rebellion and the subsequent punishment he faced was reminiscent of the story of the fallen angel. However, while Christian interpretations of Lucifer emphasized his evil nature post-fall, Prometheus was often celebrated for his benevolent gift to humanity, demonstrating the malleability of such archetypes across cultures. Lucifer's association with light and knowledge also resonated with Gnostic traditions, which were prevalent in the early Christian era. Gnostics, with their emphasis on secret knowledge and spiritual enlightenment, sometimes portrayed Lucifer in a favorable light. For them, he was a symbol of enlightenment, challenging the oppressive forces that kept humanity in ignorance. This perspective starkly contrasted with mainstream Christian views and was one of the many reasons Gnosticism was deemed heretical. Art has always been a powerful medium to convey complex ideas and early Christian art was no exception. 
Initially, depictions of Lucifer in Christian artwork remained consistent with the biblical text, presenting him as a radiant angelic being. However, as time progressed and theological ideas evolved, his portrayal began to morph. By the medieval era, Lucifer was frequently depicted in grotesque forms, with horns, wings, and other demonic attributes representing his transformed nature after his rebellion. These artistic choices reflected and reinforced the prevailing perceptions of Lucifer as the embodiment of evil. In medieval literature, the narrative of Lucifer's fall was revisited and elaborated upon. In these retellings, his story was not just about pride and rebellion, but also touched on themes of justice, free will, and the nature of evil. The moral play, The Harrowing of Hell, is a fine example of how Lucifer was represented in medieval drama. In the play, he is portrayed as the ruler of hell, challenged by Jesus Christ, who descends to rescue the souls of the righteous. Here, Lucifer is not only the fallen angel, but also the personification of all that opposes divine goodness. It's worth noting that during the early and medieval periods, the line between cultural and religious interpretations was often blurred. This was an era when religious teachings deeply influenced everyday life, art, and thought. As such, interpretations of Lucifer were not merely artistic or literary endeavors, they were profound reflections on the nature of sin, redemption, and human existence. In European folklore, for example, Lucifer sometimes appeared as a trickster figure, making pacts with mortals and testing their wit and virtue. These tales, while rooted in Christian cosmology, took on a life of their own and added another layer to the multifaceted character of Lucifer. Lucifer in Renaissance Literature and Art The Renaissance, a period spanning roughly from the 14th to the 17th century, marked a profound cultural and intellectual revival in Europe. Characterized by a renewed interest in classical art, literature, and knowledge, the period saw an explosion of creativity that transformed every field of human endeavor. Lucifer, the enigmatic fallen angel, too, underwent a transformation during this era, as artists and writers revisited his story through the lens of humanism, classical mythology, and emerging individualism. In literature, perhaps the most iconic representation of Lucifer comes from Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy, particularly the Inferno section. Dante's vision of hell culminates with the encounter of Lucifer, not as the fiery ruler, but as a grotesque, trapped creature forever ensnared in the frozen lake at hell's center. Here, Lucifer's tragedy is palpable. He is both the embodiment of sin and its ultimate victim, mirroring the Renaissance tension between human potential and the dangers of unchecked ambition. However, it was John Milton's Paradise Lost that offered a deep and nuanced exploration of Lucifer's character, aligning well with Renaissance ideals. Written in the 17th century, at the tail end of the Renaissance, this epic poem delves into the psyche of Lucifer, portraying him as a tragic hero with the famous declaration, Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Milton's Lucifer is complex, blending classical heroism with Christian theology. He embodies the Renaissance spirit of questioning, challenging the established order and asserting individual will. In the realm of visual arts, the Renaissance brought a shift in the portrayal of Lucifer. Earlier medieval depictions, which emphasized his demonic nature, gave way to more humanized and classical portrayals. Inspired by ancient Greco-Roman sculptures, artists began to depict Lucifer as a beautiful, if tormented, figure, reminiscent of his pre-fallen state. Lucas Cranach, the elder's painting The Fall of the Rebel Angels, is a prime example. While the artwork depicts the chaos of the heavenly rebellion, Lucifer is shown as a striking figure, reminiscent of classical gods, emphasizing his initial divine origin. Similarly, The Fall of the Damned by Peter Paul Rubens visualizes the dramatic descent of the angels, with Lucifer presented with both beauty and horror, capturing the duality of his nature. Beyond specific portrayals, the Renaissance period, with its emphasis on human potential, reason, and exploration of the self, found a symbolic ally in Lucifer. As the light-bringer who championed knowledge, even at a great personal cost, he resonated with an era that sought to push boundaries, question established doctrines, and elevate human capability. 
This alignment can be seen in how various Renaissance thinkers, from scientists to philosophers, faced criticism and at times persecution, much like Lucifer challenging the heavenly status quo. However, this period also grappled with the dangers of unchecked ambition. As much as the Renaissance celebrated human potential, it also recognized its limits. Icarus, the mythological figure who flew too close to the sun, became a popular symbol during this time, reminding humanity of the perils of overreaching. In many ways, Lucifer's fall from grace echoed this sentiment, serving as a cautionary tale amidst the era's optimism. Lucifer's Modern Cultural Influence As we move from the Renaissance into modern times, the character of Lucifer continues to evolve, reflecting and adapting to the zeitgeist of successive eras. The modern age, marked by rapid technological advances, shifting worldviews, and the interplay of diverse cultures, offers a kaleidoscope of interpretations for this age-old figure, making him as relevant today as he has ever been. In literature of the 19th and 20th centuries, Lucifer often embodies themes of rebellion against societal norms and questions about the nature of evil. Romantic poets, with their penchant for challenging convention, found in Lucifer a symbol of individualism and defiance. Lord Byron's Cain delves into these themes, presenting Lucifer as a voice of reason and rebellion against an incomprehensible divine plan. Similarly, Mark Twain in his Mysterious Stranger uses a Luciferian character to critique societal hypocrisy and the arbitrary nature of morality. Moving into the realm of popular culture, Lucifer has found a place in modern music, cinema, and television. Rock and metal genres, known for their rebellious undertones, have frequently drawn upon Luciferian imagery, both as a form of shock value and as a deeper commentary on societal constraints. Bands like Black Sabbath and movies like The Omen or Rosemary's Baby reflect society's ongoing fascination with the character and the broader themes of good versus evil. On television, the show Lucifer is a testament to the character's enduring appeal. Here, Lucifer is presented as a charming, if troubled, nightclub owner in Los Angeles, grappling with issues of identity, love, and redemption. This modern iteration, far from his biblical or even Renaissance portrayals, speaks to contemporary sensibilities, blending humor, drama, and philosophical ponderings. The world of comics and graphic novels, too, has not remained untouched by Lucifer's influence. Neil Gaiman's Sandman series and its spin-off Lucifer delve into metaphysical themes, presenting the titular character in a journey of self-discovery, challenging preconceived notions about divinity, destiny, and free will. Moreover, in philosophical and theological discourse, Lucifer remains a potent symbol. Existential thinkers grappling with issues of freedom, meaning, and alienation have sometimes drawn upon the Luciferian narrative to articulate the human condition. His act of rebellion, resulting in eternal isolation, mirrors existential concerns about the cost of freedom and the inherent solitude of existence. Simultaneously, the rise of alternative spiritualities in the modern era has seen a resurgence of interest in figures like Lucifer. Some modern pagan and occult traditions view him not as the embodiment of evil, but as a symbol of enlightenment, personal empowerment, and resistance against dogmatic beliefs. This reframing, while controversial to mainstream religious adherents, underscores the adaptability of the Luciferian archetype. It's also important to recognize that the globalized nature of modern culture means that Lucifer's story is now intersecting with non-Western narratives. This confluence often results in new and intriguing interpretations. For instance, in some modern anime and manga, Lucifer is fused with Eastern mythological figures or concepts, leading to unique character developments that might diverge significantly from traditional Western portrayals. What stands out in all these modern portrayals is the flexibility of Lucifer's character. He can be a symbol of defiance, a tragic hero, a voice of reason, or a complex protagonist with human-like flaws and desires. This malleability makes him a fitting mirror for the modern age, reflecting its challenges, contradictions, and quests for meaning. 
varied theological views on Lucifer. The tale of Lucifer has its roots in religious narratives, primarily within the Christian tradition. But even within this domain, interpretations of Lucifer's character, actions, and significance have been diverse. The story of the fallen angel has been explored, expanded, and even contested among various Christian denominations and other religious traditions, providing a spectrum of views that lend depth to the figure of Lucifer. Christianity, with its vast array of denominations, presents multiple perspectives on Lucifer. In traditional Catholicism, he's often identified with Satan, the great adversary of God and humankind. This perspective sees Lucifer as the highest of the angels who, through pride and rebellion, became the devil. His fall from grace is a cautionary tale about the dangers of pride and the eternal consequences of turning away from God. Protestantism, with its emphasis on personal interpretation of the Bible, has offered diverse views on Lucifer. Some Protestant theologians differentiate between Lucifer, the light-bearing angel, and Satan, the devil. For them, the name Lucifer in Isaiah 14.12, commonly associated with the fallen angel, may actually refer to a Babylonian king, emphasizing the dangers of earthly pride rather than celestial rebellion. Eastern Orthodox Christianity has its own nuances concerning Lucifer. The emphasis here is less on the angelic rebellion and more on humanity's relationship with God. Yet, the narrative of a prime angelic being rebelling against God's authority and subsequently falling from grace is acknowledged. Outside the Christian tradition, interpretations of Lucifer become even more diverse. In Islam, the character analogous to Lucifer is Iblis, Unlike Christian traditions where Lucifer is an angel, in Islam, Iblis is one of the jinn, a different creation from the angels. When God commands the angels, and Iblis being present, to bow to Adam, Iblis refuses out of pride, leading to his fall. Here, Iblis' story serves as a reminder about obedience to God's will and the perils of arrogance. Judaism, the faith from which Christianity emerged, doesn't give much prominence to Lucifer as a prominent fallen angel. The Hebrew Bible, particularly the book of Isaiah, does use the term Hellel, often translated as morning star or shining one. But this is traditionally understood to refer to a fallen Babylonian king rather than a celestial being. The Jewish tradition does have a concept of Satan, but he is seen more as an adversary or accuser rather than the embodiment of evil found in Christian interpretations. In the broader sphere of theological thought, Lucifer has been a point of debate among scholars and thinkers. Some view his story as allegorical, representing the internal struggles of the human soul, rather than a literal, historical, or celestial event. Others interpret Lucifer's fall as a testament to God's justice and the importance of divine order. Modern spiritual movements have also engaged with the figure of Lucifer. Theosophy, a religious movement founded in the 19th century, sees Lucifer enlightenment. To them, his rebellion against God is a metaphor for humanity's quest for knowledge and the challenges that come with it. Similarly, certain branches of modern Satanism view Lucifer not as an embodiment of evil, but as a symbol of individualism, rebellion against unjust authority, and the pursuit of knowledge. Another intriguing dimension to consider is the theological implications of redemption for Lucifer. While mainstream Christian views often position him beyond redemption, there are theological debates and perspectives that explore the possibility of grace even for the fallen angel. These discussions challenge traditional notions of good and evil and invite contemplation on the nature of divine mercy. In weaving through these varied theological interpretations, it becomes evident that Lucifer is more than just a static character in an ancient narrative. He is a theological touchstone, a figure through which humanity grapples with profound questions about good and evil, pride and humility, rebellion and obedience. His story, in its myriad interpretations, serves as a reflection of humanity's evolving understanding of the divine, the cosmos, and its own place within it. Through the lens of theology, the tale of Lucifer is not just about an angel's fall from grace, but is an enduring exploration of the complexities of faith and the human spirit. The Realm of Angels
To truly grasp the story of Lucifer, one must venture into the ethereal realm of angels, those celestial beings that have captivated human imagination for millennia. Angels, considered messengers and servants of the divine, play pivotal roles across various religious traditions, acting as intermediaries between the mortal and the divine. Their nature, hierarchy, and function offer a backdrop against which Lucifer's tale unfolds, casting light on his initial grandeur and subsequent fall. In Judeo-Christian traditions, angels are seen as direct creations of God, beings of pure spirit who lack the physical limitations of humans. They serve God's will, delivering messages, guiding individuals, and even waging battles against spiritual adversaries. The Hebrew Bible, or Old Testament, is replete with references to angels, from the cherubim guarding the entrance to Eden after Adam and Eve's exile, to the angel of the Lord appearing to various prophets. This concept of angels developed further in Christianity, with intricate hierarchies and orders being formulated. Theologians like Dionysius the Areopagite described choirs of angels, categorizing them into nine orders, from seraphim, the closest to God, to archangels and angels, the closest to humanity. Each choir has its own distinct role, from praising the divine to safeguarding human souls. Lucifer, often identified as a cherub or seraph, would have belonged to the highest echelons of this angelic hierarchy. This makes his rebellion and subsequent fall all the more tragic and significant, as someone from the pinnacle of the celestial order chose to defy the very source of his existence. In Islam, angels, or malaika in Arabic, have a unique nature. Created from light, they lack free will and serve as instruments of God's will. They can neither disobey nor act of their own accord. Notable angels like Gabriel, Jibril in Arabic, who delivered God's revelations to the prophets, and Michael, Mikael, responsible for providing nourishment to bodies and souls, are revered figures in the faith. Here, it's important to note the distinction between angels and jinn, from which Iblis, or the Islamic parallel to Lucifer, originates. As jinn, unlike angels, possess free will and can choose between good and evil. Beyond these Abrahamic traditions, the concept of angelic or divine messengers exists in many religions. In Zoroastrianism, the Amesha Spentas are divine entities assisting Ahura Mazda, the supreme god. Hinduism speaks of devas, or gods, celestial beings that can be both benevolent and malevolent. Buddhism references bodhisattvas, enlightened beings who aid others in achieving enlightenment. However, regardless of the tradition or religion, there are common threads in the depiction and understanding of angels. They are invariably seen as powerful, often beautiful, always awe-inspiring. They bridge the gap between the mortal and the immortal, the finite and the infinite. Their very existence poses profound questions about the nature of the cosmos. Are there realms beyond our understanding? Are there beings untouched by human flaws and limitations? How do the mortal and the divine interact? It's within this vast tapestry of beliefs and understandings that the story of Lucifer, the fallen angel, gains its full gravity. His rebellion, seen against the backdrop of unwavering angelic obedience, becomes a tale of unparalleled pride and ambition. And his fall, from the heights of the celestial order to the depths of exile, serves as a reminder of the boundaries of creation and the consequences of challenging the divine. Thus, the realm of angels, in all its splendor and mystery, provides not just a setting, but a context for Lucifer's narrative. It underscores the tragedy of a being created for greatness, who loses his place among the stars. The celestial drama of angels, with its battles, its loyalties, and its betrayals, paints a picture of a universe far more intricate and vast than what meets the human eye, reminding us of the wonders and the perils that lie beyond the veil of the known. The Hierarchy of Demons in tandem with the luminous realm of angels exists the shadowy dominion of demons, those malevolent entities that have become emblematic of chaos, temptation, and evil. Just as the celestial hierarchy categorizes angels in terms of their closeness to the divine and their function, demons, too, have been classified in various traditions based on their power and purpose. 
Understanding this hierarchy offers a deeper comprehension of where Lucifer, the fallen angel, fits in the vast cosmic panorama. Christian demonology, especially in its medieval iterations, presents a rich tapestry of demonic entities and their organizational structure. Rooted in biblical references and expanded upon by theologians and scholars, this hierarchy sees Satan or Lucifer at the apex, the fallen angel transformed into the prince of darkness. Beneath him are legions of demons, each with specific roles, ranging from tempting humans to causing diseases or sowing discord. One of the most influential works detailing this hierarchy is the Pseudo-Monarchia Daemonum, or False Hierarchy of Demons, by Johann Weyer, a 16th-century Dutch physician. Based on earlier texts and traditions, Weyer catalogued 69 demons, detailing their rank, powers, and characteristics. Similarly, the Lesser Key of Solomon, a grimoire from around the same period, provides an elaborate list of 72 demons along with their sigils and the means to summon or control them. These works, while heavily rooted in Christian traditions, often borrow from older pagan beliefs, merging ancient deities with demonic figures. For instance, Baal, once a powerful Canaanite god, gets portrayed as a demon in these classifications. In Islam, demons are typically referred to as shayatin, singular shaitan, born not from hellfire but from a smokeless fire. Iblis is their leader, analogous to Satan in Christian theology, who refused to bow to Adam and was expelled from heaven. Unlike the Christian concept where demons are fallen angels, the Islamic shayatin are from the jinn, a distinct creation. They whisper into the hearts of humans, inciting them towards sin, though they don't possess the power to force humans into wrongdoing. Beyond the Abrahamic faiths, numerous cultures and religions have their own demonologies. Hinduism, for instance, has the Asuras, powerful beings often in conflict with the Devas or gods. While not all Asuras are inherently evil, they often symbolize ego, materialism, and unchecked power. Buddhism speaks of Mara, a demon who tempted Prince Siddhartha, later Buddha, with visions of beautiful women, fear, and violence, trying to deter him from achieving enlightenment. What's particularly intriguing is the fluidity of these classifications. Figures revered in one tradition might be demonized in another. Also, as societies evolved, so did their understanding of demons. What was once seen as malevolent spirits causing illness, for example, became better understood with advances in medicine. Yet despite the myriad interpretations and beliefs surrounding them, demons universally serve as manifestations of the darker facets of existence. They personify fears, temptations, and the internal and external adversities humans face. They are necessary counterpoints to the forces of good, creating a cosmic balance. Lucifer's transition from a revered angel to the ruler of demons exemplifies this balance. His descent into the infernal realms and subsequent leadership of its inhabitants serve as a potent reminder of the duality of existence. His story, intertwined with the hierarchy of demons, illustrates the eternal dance between light and darkness, good and evil, order and chaos. Through the annals of history, literature, art, and theology, demons have played pivotal roles, representing the challenges that test human resolve and virtue. Their hierarchy, varied across cultures but consistently reflective of societal values and fears, serves as a map of the human psyche, charting its anxieties, its vulnerabilities, and its eternal struggle towards transcendence. It's in this complex web of beliefs and narratives that the full gravity of Lucifer's fall and dominion can be truly comprehended. Lucifer's legacy in contemporary media. The enigmatic figure of Lucifer with his rich tapestry of rebellion, pride, and beauty has left an indelible mark on contemporary media. This presence extends far beyond religious discussions, seeping into literature, cinema, music, and even television series. The character of the fallen angel, brimming with complexity and duality, provides a fertile ground for exploring themes of morality, ambition, redemption, and the eternal human quest for understanding. In literature, characters inspired by or resembling Lucifer have been particularly prominent. Modern novels often employ him as a symbol of defiance, a champion of human will against oppressive forces. 
This theme echoes in classics like John Milton's Paradise Lost, where Lucifer's famous declaration, better to reign in hell than serve in heaven, paints him as a tragic hero rather than a mere antagonist. Such literary works have laid the foundation for many contemporary interpretations, where Lucifer is no longer just the embodiment of evil, but a multifaceted character representing both our darkest fears and our highest aspirations. Cinema, with its vast visual and emotional canvas, has also been a fertile ground for Luciferian themes. Movies often depict him as suave, sophisticated, and irresistibly charming, yet with a menacing undercurrent. Whether it's the depiction of Lucifer as a cunning lawyer in The Devil's Advocate or as a philosophical wanderer in The Prophecy, film adaptations constantly grapple with the balance between his malevolence and allure. This duality underscores many cinematic narratives, reflecting society's own internal conflicts about morality, free will, and the nature of evil. Television, especially in the last couple of decades, has seen an influx of shows centered around demonic and angelic lore, with Lucifer often at the forefront. Series like Lucifer, where the devil becomes a consultant for the LAPD, offer a more humanized version of the character, focusing on themes of redemption, identity, and self-worth. Such shows, while rooted in fantasy, tackle real human concerns. Can we overcome our past? Is redemption truly possible for anyone? What does it mean to be good or evil? Music, too, has been profoundly influenced by the mythos of the fallen angel. From classical compositions to heavy metal and pop, Lucifer's story has been retold, reinterpreted, and reimagined in countless melodies and lyrics. Often he's invoked to express feelings of rebellion, defiance against established norms, or the internal tumult of the human soul. Bands and artists across genres, be it Black Sabbath, the Rolling Stones, or even pop icons like Lady Gaga, have drawn from his legacy, using it as a powerful symbol of resistance, introspection, or mere fascination with the forbidden. Even in video games, a medium that allows players to immerse themselves in various worlds, Luciferian themes are prevalent. Games that delve into moral choices often incorporate elements from his tale, forcing players to grapple with decisions of right and wrong, obedience versus rebellion, and the consequences of their actions. This widespread representation of Lucifer in contemporary media signifies more than just a cultural fascination with the character. It reflects deeper, more fundamental human concerns. Lucifer, in all his complexity, represents the eternal human struggle with morality, the tension between our baser instincts and loftier aspirations, and the quest for meaning in a universe that often seems indifferent. Moreover, as society becomes more secular, traditional religious narratives are often reinterpreted, reshaped, and repackaged for a modern audience. Lucifer, with his rich narrative potential, fits perfectly into this trend, offering storytellers a character that resonates with audiences regardless of their religious beliefs.